Hi, my name is Frederick Mbi, I'm from Tanzania. We just came back from Tandale, which is a very poor area of Dar es Salaam, which during floods gets inundated with water and terribly flooded. But they're very often filled with rubbish, um, rubbish which is put both by the people living there and also people coming into the community and just, just dumping. This drone which you see here is a quadcopter. They started in at about $3,000 and this one has now fallen to $1,000. I mean, you can get and build a drone for yourself for under $200 at the moment. This is your control station. This controls the movement of the drone, these two sticks here. These two can um, send and receive telemetry to and from the drone. So, and this here is a normal smartphone, it can be iOS or Android, with the app loaded which shows the, what the drone can see, so the um, telemetry from the camera. It also has a map which allows you to define where the drone should go, so you can set it up to go to various waypoints and then come back. There's other information that's displayed here, for example, distance, altitude, speed of the drone, battery level of the drone, how many satellites you're connected to, everything you need to know about for the safe operation of the drone. These are small, as you can see. You can get on a plane and put it in your hand luggage. It can be thrown about, you can go into a very rural setting, have it in your back of a pickup, set up within three or four minutes and be in the air in five minutes. One person can be in the field immediately in a disaster, get a survey, know, for example, where you should be sending your resources. In countries like Tanzania, whenever I take it out, I'll, um, I have people telling me, oh, we could use that to survey roads. Um, a brilliant example is I was at the Ministry of Water, um, I happened to have the drone with me and they asked to have a look at it, they asked to have a quick fly and as soon as it went up they said oh well we could use this to survey dams, we could use this to survey um, water pipes. I've had people talk to me about it would be great to have something like this in a game park for observing and protecting against poaching. To get real value of them in a development context, especially in a country like Tanzania, I think the drive has to come from local. Um, it has to come from people seeing the drones, having a quick go on them and then realizing, hey, I could use this here. One of the reasons I like flying in a place like Tandale is, one, you get a view of the place which would be impossible from ground level. And when you're talking to people in the community and explaining to them about how they should dispose of their trash, showing them the impact of it from above actually puts it into context for them. So that's, that's one reason why I enjoy it. And actually it's very easy, so giving it to a child in the community of nine years old and them immediately realizing, hey, this is not difficult, I can fly this. They themselves then start coming up with brilliant ideas of what they could do it. I mean, one kid said, ah, I could have it to record our, um, our football matches. Um, it's amazing. I think the critical thing is for people to understand that these drones are actually affordable and reachable and flyable by next to anybody. Um, it's getting into the community and using innovation spaces to show them that with a, with a relatively cheap 3D printer, they can make their own, they can design their own. 